ByteDance hit $180 billion valuation faster than any company, taking just eight years compared to Facebook's 12, Google's 15, and Amazon's 24. Behind this growth was Zhang Yiming, a software engineer who left Microsoft feeling restricted. His platform now reaches over a billion daily active users, capturing massive global attention. Zhang's focus on algorithms generated more than $110 billion in revenue in 2023, making him China's richest person with $65.5 billion. How did this engineering-focused founder overtake business leaders like Jack Ma? TikTok is a weapon by the Chinese Communist Party to spy on you, manipulate what you see, and exploit for future generations. ByteDance is the most astonishing uh, revenue and profit generation company in China. The, the users, the profit that they make in China is just off the charts. China's richest man once fixed computers for extra money as a college student before building his $400 billion tech empire. Zhang Yiming was simply a young man with a good understanding of machines. Born in 1983, Fujian province, to civil servant parents, Zhang grew up in a southern coastal area, far from China's tech centers. He entered Nankai University in 2001. He started studying microcomputers but switched to software engineering after one year. This move proved important for his future. In college, Zhang showed strong computer skills. While other students struggled with technical problems, he had a natural ability to solve them. Word spread across campus, and Zhang became known for fixing broken laptops and desktops. This side job gave him money while improving his understanding of computer systems. During university, Zhang met his roommate, Liang Rubo. Their shared space became a place of technical discussions that formed the base of their future business partnership. Liang later became Zhang's co-founder at ByteDance and eventually its CEO. After graduating, Zhang joined a small travel booking website called Kushin. With fewer than 10 employees, he had to handle many different tasks. One day he might code the website, the next day he fixes servers and sometimes even helped with customer support. As Kushan grew, Zhang's role expanded to leading the technical department. Working at this small company taught Zhang how technology businesses operate. He gained a complete view of how technical decisions affect business results. In 2008, Zhang joined Microsoft seeking experience in a larger company. Despite the stability and resources, he felt limited by the structure. After just six months, Zhang quit Microsoft. Few people still read physical newspapers, but Zhang noticed this shift years before others. In 2012, while riding Beijing subways, he observed that fewer people were reading newspapers and more were using their smartphones. This observation became the foundation for a new approach to content consumption. Before founding ByteDance, Zhang had started a real estate website called 99Fang. Although it was successful, he was already thinking about a bigger opportunity, delivering news through algorithms instead of traditional editorial methods. In 2012, this idea seemed unrealistic to most investors. Established media companies dominated the market, and many doubted an algorithm could compete with human editors. People doubted Zhang when he shared his ideas for a news app that picks stories for each reader. Investors questioned whether users would trust algorithms to select their news. Many believed human judgment and editorial decisions was irreplaceable. However, Zhang's engineering background gave him confidence in solving the technical challenges, even if others couldn't see the potential. The turning point came when Susquehanna International Group invested $5 million in 2012. This funding validated Zhang's idea and allowed him to build a technical team focused on creating a sophisticated recommendation algorithm. The algorithm learned from users' interactions to deliver personalized content at scale. In August 2012, Zhang launched Tiao Jiao, meaning headlines in Chinese. The app quickly stood out from competitors. Users noticed that the more they used it, the better it understood their interests, creating a strong feedback loop. Within 16 months, Tiao Jiao had 13 million daily active users. Zhang's success wasn't just about creating a popular app. It demonstrated a new way to distribute content, reshaping media consumption globally. 
Zhang's background in engineering was crucial. He focused on creating strong technical systems for ByteDance's algorithms, knowing the better tech would attract more users. ByteDance opened an AI lab in 2016 to improve its recommendations. It started a growth cycle. As more people used the platform, it collected more data, which made recommendations better, kept users more engaged, and helped the company grow faster. The launch of Duyin in 2016 demonstrated the system's flexibility. The same technology that matched users with news articles adapted seamlessly to short-form videos. Duyin keeps users engaged with personalized content. Zhang understood that in the attention economy, the most valuable asset was the technology connecting users to the content they found engaging. ByteDance's data-driven approach helped it beat rivals and transform digital content. While successful in China, Zhang Yiming had bigger goals. Unlike leaders at Alibaba, Tencent, and Baidu, who focused on the Chinese market, Zhang wanted a truly global company. By 2017, Zhang knew ByteDance needed to expand internationally to grow further. But the challenges were big. Chinese tech companies had struggled to enter Western markets, facing concerns about data privacy, cultural differences, and adapting products for international users. Zhang's strategic solution was to acquire Musical.ly for market expansion. In November 2017, ByteDance bought Musical.ly a lip-syncing app popular with American teenagers for about $800 million. Many questioned the price at the time, but it turned out to be a smart purchase. ByteDance acquired Musical.ly to enter Western markets, taking advantage of its existing popularity among American teens rather than launching a new app. In August 2018, ByteDance merged Musical.ly with the international version of Duyin, renaming it TikTok. Behind the scenes, ByteDance engineers added the company's recommendation algorithm, the same technology that made Duyin so popular in China. The results were impressive. The algorithm was adapted to understand Western users' preferences. Videos that connected with specific users were shown to similar profiles, creating viral patterns that spread content widely. Unlike Facebook and Instagram, which showed content from accounts users followed, TikTok's For You page could make unknown creators famous overnight. When the pandemic hit, TikTok became even more popular. As lockdowns kept people at home seeking entertainment, TikTok became the most downloaded app globally in 2020, with over 500 million daily users. What started as a dance platform grew into a cultural phenomenon, covering many topics from cooking to politics, education to comedy. The algorithm recognized cultural differences while keeping its personalization strength. In Europe, TikTok promoted content that matched local culture references. In Southeast Asia, the app adjusted to different entertainment styles. TikTok's parent company ByteDance set up offices worldwide and brought in local workers who knew their markets well. This helped TikTok mix Chinese technology with local knowledge, become popular everywhere. ByteDance's value grew from $75 billion in 2018 to over $180 billion in 2020, an increase of over $100 billion in just two years. This growth increased Zhang's personal wealth significantly. ByteDance had done something no other Chinese consumer technology company had, built a product that Americans not only accepted, but loved. Beneath TikTok's success lay a broader plan to transform ByteDance into a diversified and resilient company. In 2019, Zhang saw a big risk. Making money from just a few apps was dangerous for the company. If rules changed or people stopped using these apps, it could harm the whole business. To solve this problem, ByteDance used its tech skills to expand into different areas. Education technology became an early focus. ByteDance launched GoGoKid offering personalized learning for children. It also acquired Jingbei Online School in 2019, integrating AI to adapt to students' progress and learning styles, much like TikTok's algorithm tailors content. Gaming was another area of expansion. ByteDance began developing and publishing games, directly challenging Tencent. In 2019, 13 of its mini-games reached the top 10 free games on the iOS App Store, showing how ByteDance used its platform to enter new markets. Enterprise software marked another unexpected move. 
and 2017 ByteDance launched Feshu, Lark Internationally, a collaboration tool for businesses. During the COVID-19 pandemic, ByteDance offered Feshu for free, boosting its adoption as companies shifted to remote work. E-commerce also became a priority. ByteDance integrated shopping features into TikTok, enabling users to buy products directly from videos. This created a seamless path from discovery to purchase, opening a new revenue stream. What made this strategy effective was ByteDance's ability to apply its core AI capabilities across industries. The same machine learning that powered TikTok was used to personalize education, recommend games, enhance workplace tools, and match shoppers with products. Each new venture strengthened ByteDance's AI, creating a cycle of improvement. TikTok's growing success, particularly in Western countries, created major problems for its parent company, ByteDance. What started as a fun video app turned into a serious international political issue. Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Senator, I'm Singaporean, no. Have you ever been associated or affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party? No, Senator, again, okay. I'm Singaporean. DCP tells ByteDance to turn over all data that TikTok has collected inside the US, even within Project Texas. Do they have to do so? According to the Chinese law. Con Congressman, first, I'm, I'm Singaporean. The Chinese Communist Party is engaged in psychological warfare through TikTok to deliberately influence U.S. children. That your ties to the Chinese Communist Party through ByteDance is just a myth. We aren't buying it. His private company's data and technology were suddenly viewed as a national security threat, a situation that would permanently change ByteDance. In August 2020, the Trump administration issued an executive order threatening to ban TikTok in the U.S. over national security fears. Losing access to the American market posed an existential threat to ByteDance, risking billions in revenue and potential bans in other Western nations. Zhang and his team worked to address these issues. They proposed a partnership with Oracle and Walmart, creating a new entity to handle U.S. user data and operations. This move aimed to maintain ByteDance's technological edge while addressing data security through domestic storage and oversight. Zhang Yiming left his CEO role at ByteDance in 2021 and chose his college roommate, Liang Rubo, to take over. Zhang said he wasn't very good at dealing with government rules and wanted to go back to working on technology. With Zhang stepping back, ByteDance launched Project Texas. American data stored on American soil by an American company overseen by American personnel. We call this initiative Project Texas. That's why Oracle is headquartered. A $1.5 billion initiative to separate TikTok's US operations from its Chinese parent company. The project involved building data centers in the US and creating independent governance structures. In 2024, Congress told ByteDance to sell TikTok within nine months or face a ban in America. The situation placed ByteDance in a difficult situation. Selling TikTok would mean losing its most valuable international asset and its algorithmic foundation. ByteDance is well positioned in the AI race because of all the data it's collected. Every swipe, pause, and interaction across its apps creates training data for AI systems. The billions of videos, images, and text processed daily have built both the computing system and data sets needed to power more advanced AI applications. Zhang has been aggressive in hiring AI talent. By offering high pay packages that match or exceed those at AI research groups, ByteDance has attracted top researchers. This hiring strategy shows Zhang understands that in the AI race, human talent may be more valuable than money. As global attention focused on TikTok's regulatory challenges, in 2023, ByteDance introduced Douobao, an AI-powered chatbot that quickly gained 75 million active users in China. The company developed vision understanding models that operate at 85% lower cost than industry standards. This economic advantage allows ByteDance to deploy AI at scale while maintaining strong profit margins. Investors, including SoftBank and Fidelity, remain confident in ByteDance's potential. The company's valuation has surpassed rivals like Tencent, reflecting belief in Zhang's technological vision. This shows Zhang's unusual leadership style. In a tech world where many leaders love attention, 
Zhang took a quieter path. While Jack Ma grew Alibaba through big speeches and media events, and Steve Jobs turned product launches into shows, Zhang stays away from the spotlight, preferring to lead from behind the scenes. In a 2021 memo, Zhang made a surprising admission. He said he lacks the normal qualities of a good manager and prefers analyzing systems rather than dealing with people. This self-awareness shows a leader who clearly understands his strengths and limits. Zhang runs the company by focusing on how it's organized and understanding the market instead of promoting himself. He built ByteDance to value new technology throughout the company, making it easier for talented engineers to do their best work without too many rules getting in the way. Although Zhang is shy, he has built a workplace at ByteDance where people work well together and openly share their thoughts. Team members are supported in speaking up with new ideas and taking smart risks. While it may seem unusual for a quiet person to create such an open workplace, it shows that Zhang values teamwork for solving problems. When TikTok faced regulatory scrutiny in the United States, Zhang appointed experienced executives to handle these challenges. While he focused on strategical and technical development, the willingness to step back shows his understanding of what's best for the company. As Zhang himself said, only by constantly innovating can we be invincible in the unpredictable market environment. This belief helped him grow from a software engineer into a tech leader. Quiet tech experts who create powerful algorithms now have more economic influence than the outgoing business leaders of the past. What I 那么而不是一个机会导向 呃,